All right, so in the last video, we got this thing fully set up for some freaking adventures, man. And boy, do we have a big one we're going on. In a few days from now, actually tomorrow, we're gonna be taking this thing from where I'm at, just north of Dallas, Texas, and going all the way out to the Mojave Desert, riding around out there and coming all the way back. We've got fuel and water and luggage and ways to charge things and GPSs and all kinds of fun stuff, but these bags are empty. We're gonna be camping most of the time on this trip. I just wanna kinda quickly go over some of the stuff we're gonna take with us on this trip. Big shout out to Moto Camp Nerd. Before I shout them out, let me shout out Dork in the Road, who set me up with these guys. He works with them and he's really great. And I'm actually gonna see him out there at the Mojave uh, Desert, so I'm looking forward to that. He's a cool guy, check him out, man. Humble dude, makes cool videos on adventure bike sort of things. Anyway, Moto Camp Nerd. Who is Moto Camp Nerd and what is all this stuff they send? Moto Camp Nerd, he's a guy who likes to go camping on his motorcycle and he's come up with a website. I think he even has a brick and mortar store now. He's selling motorcycle gear for camping. Th this is the funny thing you'd find out uh, if you get into motorcycle camping. There's not really motorcycle specific camp gear. We I mean, kind of do have some specific needs. So when you go to get into this, you're gonna have to find, it's kind of like a hodgepodge of backpacking stuff, normal camping stuff, bicycling stuff. This man has gone really hard trying to make a very motorcycle specific set of gear. Let's put this on. So the gentleman, Ben, who runs that site was uh, kind enough to send me all this stuff here uh, in return for being completely honest with you all. Uh, I have no obligation to say anything. I don't need to say, I can say whatever I want about this stuff. In fact, he really wants uh, honesty. He's, he's one of the things he's telling me about he really likes from the consumers is when they're like, hey, this doesn't really work for what we're trying to do. And he's like, all right, cool, I'll take it off the site. Another thing about the equipment here I'm gonna show you is, I will say, he's, this is a lot of more higher end things. And I don't want anyone to see this and think, oh man, you're gonna spend crazy money to get into this. You don't have to. Start off simple and then upgrade your kit as you go. This is, I think a lot of stuff is what I would call sort of more invested. And I'm trying to be a bit more invested in the whole adventure bike thing anyway. It's been a really positive, thing to be a part of and I enjoy the hell out of it. So we've got this Sea to Summit Traveler TR2. This is a sleeping bag. It's got a comfort rating down to 40, lower limits to the 30. It's actually gonna be kind of cold out there in the desert. But yes, a nice Sea to Summit sleeping bag. You always hear great things about Sea to Summit. No, so this bag's very big. How are you gonna pack this with you? No, 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 this is the bag for when you're storing it at home. This is your stuff sack. If you didn't know, it's not really the best thing to just leave these sleeping bags in that stuff stack safe. But this will all go in here and get very, very small. But you literally just cram your sleeping bag into this little sack and it seems funny. Like, there's no way it's all gonna fit in there. Oh, it will. Once you get it down into this state, we're about to make this thing little. Pretty little, pretty, <laughs> pretty small. Also from Sea to Summit, it's an insulated uh, sleeping pad. This bag itself, I believe, becomes the pump. I, uh, I definitely am not hardcore enough to just sleep on a sleeping bag, sleeping on the ground. Um, no, a well-made sleeping pad is going to definitely be a, a needed thing for me. But if you don't want to use the little pump bag, well, you can bring a pump with you. Check out this tiny little pump here from, what is this? Oh, this is cracked. Look at that. I don't even think it works. Well, that's a shame. This is supposed to be small air pump. You can also just use it, the battery in it to just be a little battery bank. And it's a lantern. You hang this upside down, this whole thing illuminates, but uh, it's got a big crack in it and it doesn't work. This is why you should check this stuff out, not the day before you're going on a trip, because I'm sure they'll just swap this out, but uh, a pillow from Sea to Summit. I've got a little pillow that goes in the bag, but this is so much bigger. <laughs> Look at that. Look, that's like a full size. It's like a pillow pillow. Deflate it, we just pull the other end out. I'll roll it up. Back in its little sack, it'll go. Check this out. These are two different size towels. This is a small one. And look how little this thing is, this is crazy. Dude, camping stuff is so much cooler than when I was a Boy Scout. But okay, all right. Probably not gonna dry your whole body off with that, but you could, let's check out the large. Okay, <laughs> yeah. You can make that work for like a full on shower. This is like some of that good like synthetic material. So this should be something you can dry yourself off with, hang up and it should be dry by morning. I am old and I need coffee in the morning and these are single things. This is more like a coffee dipping thing. I've got one of those pour over ones I've been using before and uh, it's kind of slow and crummy. This is just a nice, uh, almost like a tea bag. You're gonna put it in there. I'll throw a few of those in my bag and it comes with a little box of them. It's supposed to be some pretty decent coffee too. So these are all different methods of gaping yourself clean. We've got a little bottle here of wilderness wash, body wash, shampoo, dishwashing detergent, clothing detergent. This will clean all things. And I believe the deal with these types of washes is, like I said, you could get yourself some water and do it, just let it go out to the wilderness, but you don't want to be next to any sort of creeks or lakes. You don't want this to directly go into like a water source. And I believe this is super concentrated from what I've heard people talk about. So that's super awesome. Also, they sent me the Sea to Summit, just some wilderness wipes. 
Wipes are good. This is I've taken full on. And these things are really cool. These are pocket soap. You remember like the other little like breath tabs you put on your tongue and they dissolve onto your tongue? Same kind of idea. It's like a little tab like that. But it's soap. So you have these little, little, I think they call them leaves in here. And you put that in your hand and you add water and you start scrubbing and you will have soap. I like it. I love it. I love the, the innovation here. And what we got here is it's like an essential wash bag. So just like a wash bag here. You got a place for your things. You got a little mirror here you can do a little shaving with. Check this out. You got a little, a little hooky do. So you can hang this up. Of course, you don't have to hang this up like in a bathroom. Your situation may be something more like this, you know? Hang it up here on the bike. Do shaving done here. But I like this. This is a good, it's good thinking. It's also got a couple of just Sea to Summit, just general dry sacks. A lot of Sea to Summit stuff, man. This seems to be the good deal here. And what's cool about these is these are more than big enough to fit into my side bags right here. Like they would take up the whole thing and then some, but they're nice and loose enough. And the thing is, these are not waterproof on their own. So this will be a great way I can put all my stuff that goes in there in these, then everything in there will be nice and dry. And then when you get where you're going, just pull the whole thing out like a bag liner, off you go. All right, and finally, I wanna show you the tent. Now, some of you guys have been following me for a while. No, I had the, I've got the Haven tent that I've been using a lot of my trips. That's the cool hammock tent that truly lays flat. It's like a freaking cot in the sky, and I love that system. It's very, very comfortable. A couple reasons I would like to not bring it on this trip is, one, we're going out to a desert where there's not exactly a lot of trees. Um, now, that system can be set up without trees. It does have a whole system for that. I've set it up that way just to see what it's like, and to me, it's like more of like something you can do in a bind, not something I'd want to just use all the time. And the other thing is, it's a little bit tight in there. For something I'm gonna be on the road with on for over a week, I think I'm gonna want like a little more spreading out room, a little more comfortable room. It's like a three person tent technically. And this is how big it is. So uh, this is from Big Agnes here. This is their bike biking solution, they call it. This is a tent I believe they've already been making, but they made it even more compact by making the pole segments really, really short. Also have a footprint for it. So what I wanna do is take all this stuff out in my backyard, set it up, so I have at least some familiar, uh, familiarity. <laughs> Some idea of how everything works before I get out there. Let's go to the backyard and play with this stuff. No instructions. Instructions are for wimps. Stop. It's a tent. I go in the tent. Everything's color coordinated, so that's helping. So I guess this is what you call semi freestanding. You technically need to stake out two of the corners for it to hold its shape. I think I've done pretty good without using any instructions. That's, uh, that looks to be right. You've got these little overhangs on both sides because there's actually an entrance on both sides. And when you add the rain fly, you kind of have these little vestibules. So kind of cool place to keep your riding boots and some other gear you may not want in the tent, but you don't want to just have out in the open. There she is. I'm pretty sure I've done it right. Uh, it, looks, it, looks, <laughs> it looks like a tent. It seems pretty structural. Uh, a couple of cool things here to notice is uh, to note, see there's these loops here top of the rain fly those are for stuff and gear into so they dry out it's a very thin filling material but i think that's how high quality stuff is it's just like to keep it light one thing i did notice though this is kind of silly you got this velcro flap that goes over your rain fly to cover the zipper that's all fine and dandy but how do i put the velcro down once i'm inside and i shut it most likely just because of the shape of it it'll do it on its own but i thought i did think that was kind of funny Roll our door open here. They also have some extra points here. I guess you could pull these out. I don't have enough stakes to do those though, so. Oh my goodness. I swear to God, I did not know that was under there. This is my kid's pandy toy. She likes this show. Yeah, so this is a two person tent, which means it's really a one person tent. <laughs> I think it's also worth noting too that you could actually set this thing up with the ground tarp and just the rain fly and delete the tent altogether. Enough room to sit up easily. Spread your feet out, you can get dressed in here. That was something with my Haven tent. As much as I love that thing, it, it's like impossible to get dressed in it. Look at that big pocket here. Again, I think this is a big pocket you're supposed to put gear in to let it dry out. I'm like right at six foot. Plenty of space in here. <laughs> you like that? Does that look nice? Hello lock system. Won't move. <laughs> I think I can live with that. You want to come in? As you can see, I've got plenty of foot foot room down here. I've made like a little trough here to the side. So you can see I've got plenty of room just to stick whatever here. Plus you've got this whole 
vestibule area, one on both sides. I'm actually a side sleeper. And this was something the Moto Camp nerd asked me about. He's like, do you sleep on your side? I was like, I do, which I realize is like the hardest for, for an air mattress to deal with. And it's dealing with it fine. My hips aren't smashing through it. My shoulders not smashing through this. Feels good. I'll pack this all back up and we need to stick it on the bike. <laughs> I've got the tent right here. I actually rolled it up with the ground sheet. So it's a little bit bigger than it was. And I've got the, the mattress right here. I was able, if I extended this out to just get this in here, it's tight. I don't think I'm gonna be able to get anything else in here. Here's the pillow, the towel. I can get the towel in there, I can do that. Oh man, this thing is just, oh. Got my coffee mug right here, and inside of it I've got my very cheapo Amazon uh, stove, a uh, little mess kit to make coffee in that. And in here, I've kind of stripped this down. This is just bringing the one big pot. So in here I've got just the gas canister, and I got a couple of things of the coffee you saw earlier. My first aid kit, this is usually and always on one of the bikes anyway. There's like granola bars in here, ramen, Grits, I love grits, grits packed down small. Simple foods, not, you know, I mean, that's a lot of space even that's taken up. Try to suck as much of this air out as we can. I'm very glad these things have a big old gnarly zippers, not some little dainty ones I gotta worry about. We can get a little more stuff down in here if we really need to, kind of right into this space right here. I've got the 10 liter Nelson rig, just a dry bag. Nice thing with this one, it's waterproof as it is. So I think I'm gonna have this right here. This gives me a little bit of a backrest. Gotta do the adventure hop. <laughs> you know, that's not, that's not too bad. I'll say my FZ is definitely a lot more top heavy when it's loaded up. I think having the weight down there on those lower bags is actually not a bad idea. This feels pretty good. Oh yeah, that's gonna make a nice little backrest. So that's me pretty much loaded up for being on gone for over a week. Uh, with camping, stability of cooking. I also have a few tools in there I didn't show you. Not a whole lot of stuff because I know a lot of other guys are gonna have a full kit with them. I just try to bring some of the very specific things I need. What do you guys think of my full on super ventured out CRF 300L? I think it's pretty, pretty fun looking. See, who needs a rally? Don't get the rally, get this one and you can make it do all kinds of things. Camping, we'll be doing different, all this cool stuff and that video's already out, it's on Patreon. Join that for $1 a month and see an extended version of all these videos and they come out early and they're ad free and it's really great. And the best part is we have a big Discord community. You should join and hang out there and it's a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to seeing some of the Discord people at the event. I know a number of them are going to be there. Am I crazy? What do y'all think? Let me know. <laughs> I think it's going to be fun, man. I'm looking forward to it. I'm trying to stress out, you know, because I feel like there's probably things I'm forgetting and things I'm going to regret not having. But you know what? That's why there's stores, right? Do I need to, I don't necessarily need to bring every little item with me. Hope to see some of y'all out there.